I welcome you guys to the part two of our Python tricks. Please make sure you subscribe, smash the like button, and share with friends. Stay tuned. Do is um, counting uh, for each element how many times they occur. So, for instance, we have um, something like this. Let me run quotes like that so you get to understand what I'm saying. So, for instance, I'm going to say um, from collections. Collections um import import um, <coughs> counter just like this. So uh, so this is going to be counting elements in a list. So let me just create a simple list. Uh, I call it simple list. Then <coughs> I'm going to pass uh, a list of let me say list of numbers. Let me start with numbers before I try with something else. Okay, so something like this. Try to make my list as long as possible. So what I'm going to do is just count it uh, in the uh, um, going to go ahead and call my count which I have here. I'll put it there. Then uh, go ahead and put my simple list in there. So that's it. <coughs> so I'll. Uh, Run this to know. Waiting for it to build. Okay, so let me run that and see. Okay, I've forgotten to print out. Print counts. Okay, so let me go ahead and check it out this time again. So you can see what is going on. It's trying to tell me that. Um, Three appeared six times, two appeared four times, um, six appeared two times, eight appeared two times, one appeared one time, fifty-two appeared one time, fifty-six appeared one time, seven appeared one time, five appeared one time, and four appeared one time. So that is that. Uh, now what about if our lists are not numbers and they are just text? So I can I can say something like. Um, let me assume their columns. We have red, uh, we have blue, we have green, then we have blue, we have blue again, we have green. We have red, like that. So I want to see if that is going to work for uh, these two as it work for the other one. So I'm just going to uh, save this. I forgot. Uh, uh, go around this so you can see. Our counter display blue occurred three times, red occurred two times, and green occurred twice too. So uh, I think there is another way um, in which you can still achieve the same goal. And um, that way it's very simple. So if I don't want to do counts that way, I can just say count. I can do it in just a single line of code by um, Creating a, a, a dictionary. So this dictionary, what's going to happen is I'm going to look through. So for um, um let me see, for color in a set in a set of simple list, just like that. So for color in a set of a simple list. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to return uh, the color because if I return the color, let me return the color. So you see color like this. 
let me turn the color I think this should work in a square this thing, but let me just check this out in case it should throw any error okay there should be an error okay there's no error so you see out of the list of color the three type of color that came out was blue or green and red you can see that so those are the type of data that are available there blue green and red and in that blue green and red i want to create a list so at the other hand we are provided with blue green and red and in the other part of it i wanted to count the number of blue and the number of green and the number of red and for me to do that i'm just going to say color uh, i think not colors uh, I'm, I'm just going to assess this so uh, we'll come to here and paste it then i'm going to use what i use if you remember uh, earlier we talk about the um, the count that we use so i'm just going to count so what am I counting? I'm counting the colors that whatever is here. If it is blue, how many blue is present in this list? If it is red, how many red is present in this list? And that is it. So I can just save that. You can save that. Uh, okay. Now that I've saved that, I can go ahead and run it to see how these look like I, I don't know okay so you can see we have the same thing the only difference that this comes with counter but kind of the same with what we have here blue uh, is three and red is two and green is two also so that's that for the that one then uh next we are going to comment this out <laughs> So the next thing we are going to talk about here is import secret. Import secret. So Python have a secret, and why is it called secret? Because it is um, kind of cryptographically secured, uh, uh, especially by Python. You can you can just uh, launch an attack. So just um, what mainly used for is used to create um, things like tokens you create things like um, um generated password um, generated password uh, or um, things like uh, um, urls uh, urls that changes their um, last this thing every two seconds or however we so a lot of things i mean so um, to use it I'm, I'm going to say import import um, secrets uh, secrets uh, like that so after importing the secret what i'm going to do uh, sorry is i'm going to say for instance i want to do a random number i can just say random random uh, because random number uh, random number is equal to so I'm just gonna call secret uh, dot run below so just like this so I'm gonna provide any ten so it's going to pick any random number from either zero to ten like that so I oh uh, sorry if I do that, I would like to print it out. Print then random number. Okay, so let's see what we get. You see, it is printed out, and if we go again and print, it is printed out. So this is a uh, way more secure compared to using random. It's very very secure compared to using random. So it generates the same numbers. Uh, you can't easily predict uh, I, I can increase it to 
either 100 and it still does the same stuff you can see um, 61 like that um, still waiting for it to so it depends on how fast your system is so see 71 uh, the, the rest like that so <clears throat> that's it for run below there are other things you can use for instance you you, you have a list of uh, you have a list of what you want to use uh, to choose so for instance I I, I put one get rid of this choice so the choice here <clears throat> and Going to pass random numbers. Maybe I want to choose from those numbers. So I'm just going to pick three, six, nine, one, four, twenty-four. So like that. So I want to pick a random number between any of this stuff here. Okay. So sorry for that. Just so picking a random number ranging only within this number we have here so if i i save this and go to my python and run that let's see what happens you see three comes out because we cannot get any value out outside that so you see so this make use of the system best resource uh, that's why you see most time in today's why um, it make use of the best the best quality of your Python of your system resource and try to generate you know uh, uh, Python whatever language you are working on is still working on C which is communicating with the hardware so it works hand to hand with the hardware to get the best not really not that kind of secure but I show you it's a way more secure than using random so um, apart from that there are other things you can do like um you can put something like a, a bit to generate password so for instance uh, i want to generate a uh, random bits uh, i can just put round bits so i can generate a code or a token for maybe let me put 16 bits uh and if i run that yeah let's see yeah Okay, let me see that's maybe this. Uh, okay, that's the mistake. Uh, let me correct that. Bits, yeah. So, uh, sorry for that. So, you can see uh, it generates a number within that range of uh, 16 bits. You can see you can take it half a bit to 32 bits. Can see the number has leveled up so just like that um the other things you can use you can put token to so you earlier that we can use it to generate tokens so i can just put token token underscore bytes so let's save this and see how it looks like so you can see it generates um, a random uh, byte x84 and the rest so we have byte we have x so these are in bytes you can see all this you know, splash of rubbish uh, we have you're not really rubbish but these are all bytes you can you can change this to if i don't want in bytes i can walk in hexadecimal so i'll just put a hex there uh, to generate random number in hex so you can see what we have here. Let me look at the screen and run that again for you to see. So you can see we have this line of stuff here. You, you can see this a lot, maybe on web page or tokens or all the mess like that. So um, that's it. So you can use this. I told you earlier, it's very difficult to, even when it comes to time, sometimes they use time, um, your timing or delay of how it works 
or how it rendered to be able to get the password but it never works with secret okay um the next one we have here is url save url save like this url save so let's see how that looks like uh so you can see how url save looks like so you see that so this also use kind of in websites and in the rest stuff like that like the url you can use that for it do your sorting and hashing and the rest so all those belongs to that so that's that for that one so we'll move further uh let me zoom in a bit okay so we'll move further to the next one which is um import statistics so that's another uh, trick you can know so sometimes you might you might sometimes you might uh, be wondering or you you, you might build a tax where you have to calculate the mean median mode variance or anything that has to do with statistics so the best approach is using this approach so with this i can calculate the I can calculate the mean, median, I can calculate the mode of any list. So, for instance, I'm giving a list, so I just call it list one. Then I'll set it to either um, something like two, three, three, one. So, like that. Or let me make it simple. When I remove this, I make it a three. And when I ask to calculate the mean, mean. So to calculate the mean, I can use the statistic dot sorry dot mean. And I'll pass in my list. I mean, oh, there's no mistake there. Let me let me print my mean to ensure that there is no mistake. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So. The mean has been calculated, which is 3.3. You can see that. So you can use your calculator to confirm that 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 5 plus 6 plus 3. Then we divide it by 6. And I'm very sure your answer should be 3.3. Apart from that, you can also calculate the... Um, uh, after mean, you can calculate the median. You can calculate the median. Uh, you can calculate the median. So I can get rid of mean and put mid and there. And I want to calculate the median. So you can see the median is three. So let's confirm that um, if we arrange this, uh, we arrange this in a list, calling it one, two, three, three, or five, six. So we like six. So the median will be three you can see that and one amazing thing here is it does not just put three it put 3.0 because this and this was added together and divided by two so that's it so this has is the case of rearranging it and looking for the median and again you can also calculate the calculate the um the variance in it <coughs> so you want to calculate the variance yeah. so i just call it very uh, you're thinking i spell things correct because if i don't i get an error so I'm just going to copy this and paste it here and I'll go ahead and run that. So that's the variant of it and a lot of statistic stuff you can do like um, standard deviation, standard, uh, standard deviation, something like this. Uh, 
not really sure about this one st let me let me try to do that and see if it works okay uh let me go ahead and run that and see if that works okay std that's the correct spelling so i'm going to do that sd dave so that's it so you can see that's the standard deviation for that so there are a lot, a lot of things you can go and make your research on it so that's um that uh, for the secret key and the statistics so we still move further to what we call true away variable so true variable is always used with an underscore like this an underscore so true away simply means we don't want you actually does not mean that it's going to get rid of that particular um value so for instance we have underscore comma underscore comma and we have x so we are going to equate it with something like um 12, 11, 22. So out of everything, what I want very importantly is X in my code. That's the most important thing I want there, which is 22. Actually, if I print this, so something is going to come out actually, which is I think 11. 11 is going to come out, but the 12 won't. So, uh, that doesn't really mean anything but it's a draw away so the most important is the x we have here which stands for 22 you can also use this in you can also use this in uh, a loop so for underscore so that's main purpose of having that although you can use it for anything you can still concentrate over it so i can say for um underscore in in uh in list So I can just skip whatever I want to skip and just print something like pro progressing progress. So uh, I might not decide to look through the value of lists like this one by doing something like this. Um, two, three, four, and the rest. So what just going to happen is when just going to run the code. The number of times and not minding the value i have provided so you see this run based on the number of times not minding what i have provided here so it's just a throw away value that's what we use it for so that's the rule there so next in what we have here is what we call the wow ross operator wow ross operator wow ross operator say help us to assigned in so let's take a look at um this example for instance we have something like um we have something like length is equal to hello so we want to get the length of the word hello so and i'm going to put in if statement if um if length is greater than five type print out word is three then five then print out the word Now, printing out the word here will be an issue. Printing out the word here will be an issue because I assigned it to length. So I, for me to be able to print out the word, I need to call word separately. So I need to call the word separately and pass the word in here. Word, just like that. So um, I can come here and put word. So uh, 
¿sí? So I can go ahead and say um, print else print um, equal or less. Okay, so I'm going to run that. So you see it's printing out equal or less. We're having equal or less. Why? Because um the word hello is greater than that. So if I get rid of one word and try it say so equal or less. So I say hello and I try it this time around. So we'll get the other one. What is greater than five? Hellos. You can see. So you can see this uh all this stuff that I need to write all this type of code, I can easily go in and use the um, walrus operator to do that at a so for using the walrus operator, I'm going to say if so in my if I'm going to pass that and I will say no or if not, then I'm going to say there's a walrus operator which this is equals to the length is equals to the length of uh, hello or else. so you can see that I just put that that way then it's greater than five then something should happen so i want you to go ahead and print uh what we have here so i'm just gonna paste that here so it's in that yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna use uh this and I'm just gonna put number as simple as that. Uh oh sorry. Um let me uncomment the word out. And I'll pass a word here. Good. So in here I'm going to pass in word word two and uncomment this guy. Yeah, and this is okay. So like this, um, you can see, um, that's simply the same thing I did here. Um, just the difference that I now put the else statement. So the word is greater than five. Okay, so you can see it's still the same thing. What's happening is, um, whatever the 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 word is, I am storing it in the word nouns. So I'm, what I'm saying is. If nonce, assuming we have an if statement, and I'll say if nonce, so let me change this from nonce to something like length so you get a clear understanding of what's happening. So if length is a word I've already declared, so I want you to store all of this length of this in this. So actually, all of this code like this is what I have in here, like that. So and you do the rest one by adding the else statement so that's one of the advantage of using that so um next year is comprehension uh with if else condition so we have been doing this uh, but i want to make a little more emphasis on that so let's get to see what we can do with it so uh I'm just going to speed up a bit. Good. So um to do that I'm going to say for instance I have a list of numbers, so I'm just gonna say list let's call one. So uh now this list of numbers, I want to do something with them. I want to check which numbers are even numbers and which numbers are odd numbers. And to do that, 
I want to display them in a list. So for instance, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So like this. So I want to check from this number we have in which is even and which is odd. Okay. Let me stop here. So to do that, I'm just gonna say um even odd. Just like that. Then I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and check for my new stuff there. So going ahead and check for the new store, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from a loop to loop through those stuff. So I'm just saying for x in list underscore one. So I've looped there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to um now I'm, I'm using the comprehensive um comprehension. Yeah. So for x in this one, what I want to do is to check if it is an even number. So I'm going to say if x even number is you use this if it's divisible by two and the remainder is zero so if i divide it by two one divided by two the remainder is not zero two divided by two and the remainder is zero that is correct three divided by two the remainder is not zero four divided by two and the remainder is zero so if the remainder returns zero then let the code about to um um give you here yeah, let it run so let's x run if that is true else else let's minus x run so i spot it out um, i just put it out which is even and which is odd so if i save this and go and run that right away let's see what we get Sorry, I, I didn't print it out. I don't know, I always forget to print out. Print out even odd. Even odd like that. So let's do it again. You can see all the even numbers are normal and all the odd numbers are minus. So we can make it look a bit better by coming to the first place where we have this and, and, and just say um, f string uh, like this. I'm going to refer that this is even even and I'm going to do the same where we have the else x paste it here paste it there then I'll change this to odd so just like that so I'll go ahead and put that forward. So you can see one is odd, two is even, three is odd, four is even, five is odd. So this might not probably be the thing, but this is uh you should get the whole concepts about what I'm trying to explain there. So all this stuff was just in a one line of code using the for loop and the if statement for watching and um, please make sure you subscribe and look out for the next video and please share with friends don't be stingy share with friends so if there's anything you want me to improve on please let me know on the comment section thanks